about several inscriptions from the Caucasus mm -hmm. for this article and understand that this is the uh, good place to show a very short uh, video, it is six minutes, uh, which was made six years ago, one year before his departure. I had an idea to make a documentary devoted to the first printed European edition of the Quran that is uh, produced in Venice by Paganini Brizensis, and it was Sergio who made uh, it, uh, this information popular. Just uh, one uh, copy was found in one of the monasteries uh, close to Venice. So I came to Lessa uh, with a group of my friends with whom I'm working. We spent uh, the week working uh, together with Sergio, and my friends just were shooting this for future, God knows what. Unfortunately, we used this for such a purpose. Uh, the video was distributed uh, as, um, I just make, I made short, a small uh, CD and attached it to Manuscript Orientale and it was distributed to, uh, to the subscribers. Tom, will you say something? Eh? Well, <coughs> I, I haven't. Get up, get up. I haven't prepared anything at this moment, but when, I, uh, when it just passed away, uh, it had, I had seen him two months before in Tallinn, and uh, before, the, before that, um, he, he had talked to me intensively. I, he suddenly appeared on my radar. It was actually an email from Yefim, where I got uh, an, uh, in capital letters, which is typical for someone who is not really very much in computing. <laughs> I'm the friend of Yefim, and I'm coming to Amsterdam. Please reserve uh, two places in the best restaurant of Amsterdam. And, <laughs> and then uh, he was in the best hotel. Uh, and uh, then he's, he, uh, he, obviously it was him because there was nobody else in the lobby. <coughs> Small man, and, and I'm rather taller than him. I said, ah! Milo, I've heard so much about you. You are a scholar, a soldier, and a traveler, and an inventor. And then he came with all these compliments, and gradually he started to tell his own story. I had already grown oversized in self-esteem, but then he <laughs> explained who he was. <coughs> he was the son of an Italian Air Force general, born in the 30s. Um, he, um, in his school years, he... Uh, he got deeply disaffected with fascism. He grew up in fascist Italy. It was the uh, gymnastic teachers that convinced him that fascism was wrong. <laughs> and uh, uh, <coughs> when the war broke out, and in the uh, in 41, uh, the first prisoners of war from the Russian front arrived in the area of Bergamo, where he lived, he decided to help the Russians. He thought that the Russians were the only ones who were making progress against the Nazis. So he gave them, <coughs> he helped them to food secretly. As he got more daring, he gave them <coughs> weapons. He helped to, he got involved in people who, who actually armed them. And he has this fantastic anecdote where he learned his first Russian, out, simply out, sh out of sheer emotion that the Russians were doing something. <coughs> but he, he, um, uh, there were Russian signs, uh, like uh, warnings, stay away from the fence because it's dangerous. And he understood that this is octopacto, which is, of course, a misreading of astarozhna in Russian. So that was his first uh, foray into Russian, by misreading the characters. But <coughs> as a, uh, the, the German in intelligence got, got, got track, got the scent of his activities, and he realized that he, he, he fled to the south in 1944, I think, crossing the front line, and then uh, under a false age, joined the 8th Army of the British 8th Army, which had by that time an Italian contingent, because Italy changed sides. And as a 15-year-old, he was a group commander in the infantry, in, in firing a mortar squad, fire, fighting the Nazis. <coughs> when the war was over, uh, and this is, he said, Milo, I, I only then realized what, it, what this was about, and I decided to learn Hebrew. Because, it, well, he, he was, we followed his, his, his emotions when he learned Russian, so I learned Hebrew. And then, 
I had to do Aramaic, and you know, Milo, how this is. Before you know, you end up doing Arabic. So he was here. Here he is, a professor of Arabic, <coughs> who got into this field basically by this emotion. But at the same time, his dad has told him he had actually applied for an officer's commission in the British Army, <coughs> and then a motor driver came to instruct him to report to his commanding officer, and he was delighted in expectancy. He went there. I will get an officer's course. And instead, there was, his father, there was his father, his mother, the war was over, he was 15 years again, and his dad told him to go to bloody school. And he then uh, <coughs> found work later with uh, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, because that was one of the first European airlines to be back up in business. And that was his first step into the Dutch connection, from which he became uh, later involved in uh, the the Italian's department of, uh, of uh, um, Philip Electronics. And he became, he, became he, he, he retired as the financial director of Philips Electronics, while at the same time he had built a career as a professor of Islamic and Arabic studies. <laughs> and in the initial stages, both sides didn't know that he was living a double life. So by the time he had finished, he was that big and I was this small. Yeah, yeah. But it was a fantastic experience to get to know him. And in another thing, and, uh, uh, he uh, <laughs> developed, he invited me also to Lesa on the Lagio Maggiore, where he had his villa, Noia Nozeda, <laughs> and where he wanted my help to produce his fantastic volumes of of, uh, 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 of Quran fragments. Uh, this this never came to fruition, but uh, <clears throat> I remember how he said to me, Milo, all my ancestors are, are generals, and I'm embarrassed that I'm just a civilian professor, but I deal with this subject in a military way. I don't have these individual suicide attacks into the field of Islamic studies. I work on a simple array of a battle of the order. Strategic. <coughs> Strategically, I'm bringing out all these texts first yeah. before we start all these wild discussions. And thanks to Nozeda, we have the beginning of a huge series of publications of the, the raw materials. I think this, this sums yeah. it up. We'll see. That's, that's what he told me as well, that, that he was putting this out for younger scholars to go through and do the work. Yeah, yeah. You cannot have all these wild discussions if you don't have the facts. Yeah. When he was alive, his uh, mansion in Lesa was one of the headquarters of the Quranic studies. You will see his library. And he was, it seems to me, without him, we never have seen uh, the forthcoming volumes of the Documenta Quranica because I remember how he can uh, call Berlusconi, ask to call Saleh to Yemen to give, the, uh, ask for the possibility to arrange making photo of this manuscript. So this is. Very great loss to all of us. Yeah. Let me uh, just uh, a few, few words. Like if you want to um, uh, find, uh, uh, download the video, it's very easy. YouTube Sergio Noseda, then it uh, turns up. Uh, uh, you will see uh, this is in, uh, in Russian, but, in Russian, but it's easy. But here you see in the Moriam, this is Sergio Noseda. Uh, it's easy to read it even without Russian. Uh, uh, I've downloaded it, which is very easy, and uh, I think the chunk quality is better than here.
из России с любовью. Okay,